Hi, my name is Sangmin Park and I teach economics at a German University of Applied Sciences. In this video series, I will show you a concept for creating one tech teaching videos, that is, videos without the need for editing and post-production. The first video was about my concept, the second video will be about technical equipment, that is hardware, and in the third video I will talk in detail about software. Let's talk about hardware, meaning the technical equipment I use for creating teaching videos. Obviously, the first thing is a computer. This is the only item in the, on this list that is really essential. All the other things are strictly optional, which I hope shows you that the hardware requirements for creating teaching videos are really not that bad. The second item is the microphone. Among all the optional items, this, I would say, is definitely the most important one. Third items, uh, the, the third item is a webcam for recording your face or other shenanigans. Fourth item is a second monitor, or even a third monitor, which makes it much easier to monitor your video output. Fifth item, and most situational, is a graphics tablet, which I personally use to include handwritten annotations in my video. So, computers. This is the part that is essential for, any teaching, for my teaching videos. OBS is available for PC, OS X, and Linux, so you are not really bound to any platform. In my experience, OBS has a very small footprint in your system, which is, the one, of, which is one of the reasons I prefer it over alternative recording software. My personal work PC is a small Dell laptop with an i7 um, processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and an integrated graphics card, so nothing special really. Um, I will paste the details into the video description so you can compare it with your machine. Um, with my machine, I have no trouble recording regular teaching videos. However, this is very situational. For instance, if you are primarily interested in recording software tutorials, I would recommend that you record with high quality settings and a at um, 60 frames per second. This is the one kind of teaching video where video quality actually impacts the content as high quality and a high FPS make it that much easier to follow the mouse cursor and all other inputs and outputs you might record. For these kinds of settings, my work PC will have trouble recording a stutter-free vi video, which is why I use my gaming PC for that kind of teaching video. That being said, you simply have to try it out for yourself. As I said, it all depends on your context. I mentioned in the beginning that the computer, or to be more precise, laptop, is the only piece of hardware that is essential. Why is that? Well, most modern laptops have a built-in microphone and also a built-in webcam for video chatting, uh, usually located somewhere around here. Thus, a standard laptop includes everything you need for a basic teaching video. The processing unit that runs OBS, the microphone to record your audio, and the webcam to record your face if you so desire. <coughs> the first optional piece of hardware is an external microphone. Although this is strictly speaking optional if your laptop has a built-in microphone, I would highly recommend getting an, an external microphone. The reason for this is that sound quality is one of the most important criteria for the overall, overall quality of your teaching video, and in my experience, most built-in microphones are just not very good. Also, a built-in mic is fixed in place, so you cannot adjust its position to suit your recording environment. Personally, I use a cardioid uh, USB microphone, which is also the one used for this video. At the time of recording, it runs at around 70 euros on Amazon Germany. I will link to it below. Cardioid means that the microphone is built such uh, to record sound from directly in front of it, while rejecting sound from other directions. This makes cardioid mics perfect for recording your voice without distracting background noises. <coughs> Having an external microphone gives you enough flexibility to position, to position it very closely in front of your mouth for recording. Personally, I have my microphone on a little desk stand in a shock mount that absorbs unwanted vibrations from the table. Also, I would recommend getting a USB microphone instead of a microphone that plugs into the audio ports of your laptop. Again, this is just the setup that I am content with for now, for the most part inspired by the setup of podcasters and live streamers. You will have to find out your own microphone setup. You could also use a headset with an attached microphone directly in front or, ne or next to your mouth. 
In my experience, the audio that you get from such mics tends to be a bit tinny. Also, I find that I talk differently when having my ears covered by a headset. In order to give you an idea of how different microphones might sound like, I will provide an extra video with audio samples from different microphones. As with all things technical, you can always get fancier. <clears throat> really high class USB microphones will cost you at least 200 euros. And if you want to get really fancy, you could also attach an, an external input mixer to your laptop so you can adjust your voice recording on the fly. But really, that is just my inner nerd speaking. The second piece of optional equipment is a webcam. This is a lot more optional than the microphone, as you might not be interested in recording your face for your teaching videos. Personally, I like to record my face for te my teaching videos and I include it in the video, usually rather small and tucked away in a corner. My gut feeling is that this makes my teaching video a bit more human and personal. Again, if you want to try this out, the first thing you might try is the built-in webcam of your laptop. Modern, many modern laptops have decent quality webcams. The only disadvantage in using a built-in webcam is that you are very inflexible concerning the positioning of your camera. If you do need a bit more flexibility, you can always try an external webcam, which is the setup I am using. Here you might want to consider a webcam that can be mounted on an extra stand instead of just loosely draped on top of your monitor. Personally, I am using a webcam by Logitech, which I am very content with. If you need higher quality video recording, for example, because you want to record something your hands are doing or you want to record showing you showing something at a whiteboard, you might want to consider using a good quality um, photo camera or video camera as webcam. Now this doesn't work with every model, but many cameras can be hooked up to your computer, not only to transfer data, but also to provide a live preview of what's in front of the camera. You can use this preview window as a makeshift webcam simply by turning your recording software to, rec to capture this specific part of the screen. Again, there is virtually no limit as to how fancy of an equipment you are using in this context. Next on my list is a second monitor. As I have mentioned multiple times, when you are producing a one-take teaching video, you are a one-person recording studio slash control room. In order to manage this, it can be very useful to have two or even more monitors. Personally, I use three monitors in extended screen mode. While recording, my main monitor shows me the presenter view of my PowerPoint slides, so basically my script. My second monitor shows me the PowerPoint full screen or anything else I might have prepared to show in my video. And my third monitor shows me my OBS window, so basically a live preview of my video. Again, this is optional and, I, and will make your office look a lot more geeky, but I find that it really helps. Please note that depending on your laptop's graphics card, a third monitor might not be an option. The next item on my list is, the one, that I'm, is one that I'm very fond of, which is the graphics tablet. A lot of the time, a teaching video will consist of presentation slides plus voice. Usually, this does not involve a lot of dynamic components, which can be useful to capture your audience's attention. With a graphics tablet, you can easily add a lot of dynamics to your standard presentation slides. You can underline words, you can circle words, you can cross out words, you can add an extra line of calculations, Um, you can draw an arrow. You can even adjust, you can even just show an empty slide and develop some argument purely with handwriting. Now you might say all of those things can also be done with PowerPoint animations, which is true, but I think doing those things with a pen and imperfectly adds a significant human aspect to your teaching video. And if you want to see this in action, check out the two links to the Khan Academy and Jörn Lovischach, respectively, provided below in the comments in the uh, video description. Personally, I use a graphics tablet um, by Wacom for almost all my teaching videos. You actually don't even need extra software as PowerPoint includes the option to use your mouse pointer as a pen, so you can draw and write on your slides while presenting. This was the second video in the series on producing one tech teaching videos. Like this video if you liked it, dislike if you didn't like it, leave a comment if your feelings are more complicated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.